Hello, this is Founder Laron, and I am with Fantasy Grounds Academy. I am going to continue working on map challenges. Today I'm going to work on this log bridge that was created by Mopsy in our community. So if you guys are interested in any maps, he's a pretty good cartographer, has fair prices. Um, commissioned him to create this log for the Oracle of Three module or adventure that I'm creating for Fantasy Grounds. Um, hopefully I'll have this finished someday. I've been picking at it for a long time, but um, figured I'd share some of the process with you when I'm working with the maps. Last week, or last time I did this, I worked on the town, which really was pretty simple. There wasn't a whole lot of line of sight or any map challenges involved, so I'm going to go back here. Uh, we did Kedwick Crossing, which is the last video, and this is basically just a real basic map with a bridge over river. Um, we did put a little bit of effects on the on the river itself, so and then we had a token that we kind of used to test out the map. So we'll kind of do the same thing today. And I use this party token so that we can um, use for progress on the overland map, which is the regional map. So if you were going to play in something like this, and you had your combat tracker up. In this case, I have the party token on the combat tracker. I don't know if that's necessary, but um, you can drag this onto the map and use this as a marker as to the progress of your group. So if you wanted to keep track of where they are at any given time, you can do something like that. But that's basically just a, a little tip or something that you might do in the future. But what I would do is link the party members to the back where the other tab is. And then this is also giving instructions on how this works. So you place NPC in the combat tracker, go to options, you change or enable the setting to um, token, GM, section, party vision, um, you set that to on. So you would change this to a friendly, which is something I need to put on here. And then you would go to the options and go down to the part where you can actually turn on the party sharing option, which is allows everyone to control and look through the, the vision of that token. So it's on right now. So I'm gonna set this over and, and link it onto this, this, the back sheet here to make it convenient. So party vision on. So here's the token, the combat tracker, the options. And now I'm going to actually drag the option that you can toggle this on or off when needed. So if you look at all these little shortcuts on the left, this is fairly new to have these on here. So I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the sheet. Oops, wrong, wrong area. Okay, let's try it again. So party vision and movement on. So grab this and drag and drop it. Yeah, I don't see that working. So that can go in your hotkeys. So when you're playing with this module, you click on options, and then you just drag and drop this decal, or this, in this case, it would be the party vision option. So that that's not too bad. It's, it's really making it so that it's more convenient. Uh, let's see, so it's not really, uh, you don't have to do this, but if you take this and drop it into the, the shortcuts you can turn on or off the toggle um, so this is actually turning it on so that's how you can do that to make that more automated but anyway so that's what we did last week we played around with that and we put line of sight on the town map so what we're going to do today is work on this bridge so there's two variations of the bridge one is closed so we have this kind of open somewhat open anyways um, area where the players might cross this bridge during a kind of a strategic critical time during the adventure. And this is one of the only few crossings there are without swimming. And there's also an embankment, so it's kind of steep to get down to the river. So that's that's why this bridge is here. This thing is probably the size, almost the size of a wet uh, a redwood tree or potentially a. Uh, large oak or douglas fir you know something really big so the tree fell over and it kind of rotted and there was a termites nest in there 
and after a while the termites left because it was spanned across the river and i think the the termites knew better that they would fall into the river someday if they kept going so they ended up leaving and a very un unhealthy and very mean spider queen or a spider uh, folk took this over so they they now nest inside of the log that's been hollowed out by the termites um, so they have a nest in there and they kind of control the bridge uh, going back and forth and as you get closer to the bridge you'll see random carcasses and such uh, laying around uh, as you get closer so there's some clue as to something that's going on here and there's some webbing and stuff on the outside but for the most part it's just um, a crossing at this point um, also Mopsy had put like a little trail on there to kind of give an impression that that you know game animals and and such use this to cross over uh, the bridge itself is uh, natural. It's got some vines growing on it. You know, things like that. So we don't have to do a lot with the line of sight on this. Is really, the only thing we're going to do is maybe put uh, the river and a pit down below. And maybe this, you know, that's pretty much it. We don't really have to um, put anything, uh, you know, vision-wise. Because you should be able to see most of the top of this, even if you're standing... Uh, back a little way so we might put uh, some kind of I don't know maybe just some terrain on here and that's about it because there's no need to to do a whole lot and make this more complex than it needs to be so I'm going to get started on that and then one of the first things you want to do with any map especially if you don't um, know where it came from and, or you know, if you're not sure is it's good to know the scale so Mopsy made these at 100 pixels per inch. So that means for every square, um, there's 100 pixels. So I'm going to set that now. So you go into the options. You have to unlock the map first. And over to the far right, there's a grid. So we're going to put the grid on this thing. And I'm going to set this to 100. And it's meant to size and keep the aspect ratio. So that's basically your, your uh, map there. And let's see what else we got here. So now you can see the map is not quite lined up here. So I want to take a look at. Yeah, so maybe 75. Yeah, I'm not sure why this. Maybe he set this one at 50. Yeah, this one's set at 50. Uh, it could just be the scale of it. But this log is pretty good size. So, you know, it's, it's not a small, small thing. So it's. It's, you know, basically man size or, you know, you when you walk up to this thing, the top of this, the wood up here is, you know, just over your head. So it's not, not a tiny thing. And it has a hollowed out section in here that you can tunnel through, um, but it's not readily visible. It's hidden by some webbing and some debris. So it's not like you walk up and there's a, there's a covered bridge. I mean, it's, it's got tunnels in there, but they're protected and that sort of thing. So you have to kind of climb up onto the log. So that's the, the idea, anyways. So I think I will put terrain just on the outside of it, just so, like, when they walk up, they can see the bridge, but they can't see on, on top of it. So we'll probably do something like that. So this one is a 50 by 50 scale, and if you count that across, it's about 35 feet across, roughly. So that's, that's what we had negotiated on. And that's probably why you scaled it that way, because of the, the fact that this bridge is pretty big. So Okay, so we're, we're going to put just some uh, basic line of sight and some kinds of, uh, you know, to, uh, things that help uh, to see what, what uh, players would see. And a lot of it is just going to be a pit and water. So let's see what happens. So... I'm going to first do the outline of this particular thing. And if you don't like the, the vertical orientation of a map, like let's say, or you don't want horizontal or whatever, you can flip this. I think that's what I'm going to do just for perspective-wise, because I think it's kind of hard to to work on it like this. Until I'm done, then I can always flip it the other way. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, map, and you would do this before you put the grid on, so... We'll see how the grid lines up, but 
You take that and you would flip this to the right or the left. So I'm going to flip it, I want to say, to the right. So I have the layer selected. I'm going to go to the Layers tool. And all you have to do is click on this uh, Rotate Clockwise. And that, that that's two clicks and you can move that to the side and, and have it sitting horizontally instead. So these were designed to be vertical, but you can pretty much do whatever you want as long as you're comfortable with it and you have a good idea of what you want to do. So that's pretty cool. So I'm able to take that and then I'm going to stretch this out so that I can have better visibility. And then I'm going to lock the layer because I don't want it to move again. I'm going to go back to the selection mode for line of sight and I'm going to click on zoom to fit and that should center it. Now we can kind of see the whole thing and, and not vertically. So there we go. So there's the map. So north is actually to the right. So we have to keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and put some line of sight there. So I'm just going to use the line tool and then the terrain tool, which is a little Christmas tree. Then I'm going to take the edge of this map and not right at the edge but kind of near the top of this because the very edge is the visible edge i just want to kind of give a rough contour of the bridge i'm not trying to make this fancy or you know doesn't have to be super accurate there's mushrooms and stuff growing on here there's holes in the wood there's spider webs there's vines it's a regular pathway and it's just gonna put a little bit of line of sight on here just to give you the impression that it's a large object and that you just can't see all the way over it so that's what we're doing right now so that's what, all i'm doing is just kind of just going around randomly clicking on different points that might kind of show the rough shape of this log i don't necessarily need to get every little single curve and you start doing that that's when uh when this stops being fun because then you're you're getting just way too intense about it and that's the way i started i started to uh create maps and and edit them and i got just way too way too way too detailed and too crazy about it and it it really stops being fun at that point and if you're spending more than an hour or so on this you're probably doing something wrong or it's unless it's a commercial product of course so you might you might have to do some accuracy in there but uh it's really not necessary for something like this and i might sell this but i might not i don't know but now i'm going to go back and I, I forgot about this branch right here so rather than redoing it i'm just going to stretch this out and use some of the existing points so i don't even have to redo it i'm just going to use some of the existing points and move them around because there's really no reason to have this that that accurate so that that's pretty cool right there i think uh that'll give the party an impression of the size of this thing and that's basically the area that they can traverse across and all that's going to do is block lighting it's not going to necessarily block them from going across so that's all that's going to do um so they won't be able to see past it basically Depending on the direction of what way the sun's coming, I'm thinking since this is north facing, the sun is going to come in from this uh, this northeast corner up here. So that's probably what the direction I'll have the shadows casting. And that's also kind of what he's done already is he's got some shadows that are facing to the left. So I'll follow the, the shadows that he's already got in the map. And then like for something like this, like if you need to adjust this, like maybe you want to come out a little bit further. You know, it's it's not critical. It's it's not going to break the game if it's not absolutely dead nuts perfect. I mean, you don't. There's no need for that really. Okay, so there we go. So there's the basic outline. Um, it's really not not that big of a deal. You're basically just following the contour, and you're not getting all stressed out and panicked and, and that sort of thing. It's just make sure that you're on either the line tool and you're in terrain and when you want to move the lines that you're in the selection tool that's the biggest thing if everything else will kind of come with time if you mess up you can hit Control z or you can come back after the fact and restretch the lines like i did there's there's no need to get all uptight and weirded out this is just a, a 
a tool to um, enhance the, the play. It doesn't break the game necessarily. It just makes things a lot cooler for immersion. So even if you don't do all this and you just throw a a uh, mask on top of it, I mean, that's that's up to you. It's not, not that big of a deal. All right, so that's the, the log itself. So now I want to work on the water. So what I'm going to do is create the illusion that this that this river is moving. So we'll see how that looks when I actually put the water effect on there. And it's going to come up to the bank of the river. So if they fall down, it, it'll be hard to get out. So I'm going to start that process. So I want to go to the pit tool. And then I'm going to start up here in this top left corner and, and just go through and make this area with the line tool. So I want to click here and go all the way across the river. And I'm not going right up to the edge. I kind of want to leave a little bit of the embankment open so that when the players are on this map, they can see what's going on. And I'm just going to come through here and, and make this part of the contour of the log because it doesn't have to be exactly I mean there's a little gap in there that's not a big deal if they fall and they catch themselves maybe they catch the lip of the log or something like that I'm not too worried about it so th being that mu that accurate is just way too intense there's there's no need for it especially if you're just using this for your home games okay so that's the pit area so when when they come to this area if for some reason they get knocked off the log or if they fall then they will basically be more difficult for them to get out because I have it blocking. So it's toggleable to where, you know, you can make it to where the blocks movement or you can turn it off, but it is a pit. So they, if they fall, they're going to fall quite a way. So if you want to make any adjustments, go to the selection tool first. I'm going to bring this out because I don't, I don't think it needs to be right there. That's still part of the tree. And then I can kind of adjust a little bit, you know, just just kind of touch it up. There's really no no stress here or no no weirdness. Just trying to keep everything kind of copacetic, and you don't really have to get all all mad. And as I've seen people get really stressed out, and it's really not supposed to be like that. I got some nature music in the background, so I'm not um, feeling like I'm in a rush because that's another thing is you, you don't want to rush something like this. It's not made for for whipping, cranking things out. This is kind of a labor of love thing. It's it's not a production thing, you know, it's where you're constantly having to meet deadlines and stuff. Unless you're, <laughs> of course, if you're running a campaign and you're behind, it could be a problem. But anyway, so that's all I'm doing is just kind of taking this and, and uh, making this more contoured towards the environment, just kind of, making things a little bit more even and, and accessible. And I don't want to get these right up to the edge so that, that it makes sense. So you doubt that anyone's even going to be over in this part. See, these are a little bit too too far in, so they don't need to be that, that close to the bank of the river. So that's something that a lot of people make that mistake is they want to go in and, you know, have everything right up to the line you don't you don't need that all right so there's the embankment that's probably shallow water anyway so I'm not too worried about it and i like the detail if you zoom in on this you can see the logs underneath and the uh pretty cool all right so that's the the pit part of it and i'm going to do the bottom now same thing start up in this corner i want to make sure i'm in the line tool i was in the the selection tool so i'm just going to kind of come through here do the same type of thing. Just take it easy. Just click around. You don't have to be accurate and perfect right at this moment. Like you said, you can go. Like I said, you can go back and and work on this and and make it better for yourself as you as you click away on here. You can decide if you want to go back and and fix this. So this is just a preliminary thing. Let's see. And it's not that critical. I mean, it's not mission critical to where, you know, I'm hurting anything or making anything bad. This is this is a kind of a relaxed type thing. So I'm not really stressed out right now. 
I trying to make this more enjoyable. I got some, like I said, I got some nature music. Doing the Bob Ross thing, kind of just little happy little accidents, you know, that sort of thing. So now that I have the basics of it laid out, I can go back to the selection tool and take some of these points and drag them to where I think they should go based off of, of the contour of the land. So I just kind of laid out the basics of it and then come back and adjust as needed. So I think like this is a little close, so that can come out here. I mean, there's just all kinds of room for adjustment and you don't want to paint yourself into a corner. That's usually what people do is they'll they'll get so uptight about this they'll point them paint themselves into a corner and get all get all mad and then they're just like, Oh, I don't want to do it or they you know, they oh Spanish ground sucks. Well it's usually the user error or a misunderstanding of the tool or, or the lack of practice because that's definitely something that I that I suffer from is not having the practice that, that that's required to learn a powerful tool like this. It's not a uh, video game, but it's certainly got a lot of oomph to it uh, when it comes down to it. So, like here, this is a bunch of points that must have happened when I when I was uh, creating this. So, if I take in, let me see if I can delete that point without breaking the bank. Yeah. So, these points, some of these don't need to exist so if you single click on them and hit the delete key uh, you can get rid of those without too much grief what will happen is you'll you'll see it'll jump and you can always hit control Z but I'm not even gonna worry about that little thing there it, it's not hurting anything I mean it's it's not like the end of the world where where I need to you know freak out but if you wanted to highlight it you could you could take these points and drag this uh, selection tool and all I want to do is drag these around this area here and that selects these these lines here and that's that's it it's not that big of a deal and then I can take this and see now it wants to create another of another line so I'm just gonna leave it is all you're gonna do is just, it's gonna keep happening and you're gonna go nuts. So I'm just leaving it. it. I took out the extra points. It's good. And then same thing with this. And see, I'm in the drawing tool, so that's why I'm getting that problem. So I need to go to selection tool. There we go. Ain't no big deal. Just relax. Don't don't get all weirded out. It's not not worth it. You kind of have to have the you know mature approach to this. You you're not gonna master something like this in one day. You, you really have to put your time in. And and I've been putting in months and months, and I'm still learning and getting proficient with the tool. So this is something that you're gonna have to put put some time into. That's all there is to it. It's one of those things. And if you don't have the time, then don't do it. That's the way I look at it. I mean, don't don't complain about it if you don't don't uh, get instant results. That's not what this program is, and it's certainly not designed with that in mind. I said it's kind of a labor of love. Okay, so that's that's the line of sight right there. I mean, that's pretty much a majority of it. Now I'm going to put some effects on it and deal with the ambient lighting, and we're going to call it good. So that's not a, a tough map to do. It's very simple. Um, hey, what's going on, Seth? Good to see you. So we're just kind of um, getting used to the, the map tools and practicing, and I'm working on a campaign module that I, I may or may not sell commercially. I don't know yet, but uh, it's called the Oracle of Three. Um, basically, right now, I'm just making some adjustments to the map. Nothing, nothing critical. Just chilling out. Okay, so now that I have that in, what I'm going to do is put a layer on top that is going to indicate where the water is. So first I'm going to go to the effects button and down at the bottom, I'm gonna click the effects add layer and this is just a blank effects layer. So I want to take this, and what I'm going to do is come around these rocks and make some kind of 
effect after the fact, but I want to first get just the base water in here. So I'm going to drop this down and select the water tool. And what you'll get is this big, large, wavy thing all across the map. So you don't want that. So you're going to have to put a mask over all this whole thing. So I'm going to click the enable mask. And then up here on the top left, there's a reveal area. So I'm only going to reveal the areas that I want the water to be shown in. So like this big section here, I might do that just to give you the impression that maybe this is a, uh, a shadow or maybe this is a reflection of the forest above so you don't have to worry too much. And then, of course, I'm going to come down here and do this little strip in here. So that is going to be like this. Real basic. All I'm doing is squaring off the major parts, and then when I get done, I'm going to come around the edges and do the, the rounded part. So right now I'm just getting a, the bulk of it into, into this water effect. And like I said, you don't have to do it all in one take. So just kind of doing it in sections. So don't don't have to keep zooming in and out stuff. So that's that part. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. So just kind of relax. Take your time. Going to have all kinds of cool things going on when once this is done. Have some play testing and might even do a Kickstarter. We'll see. I got to get somebody that's good with laying out the PDF. That's where I'm very very lacking. Is I don't know how to lay things out. I don't have InDesign and I don't really want to take the time to make a PDF. But I know that's where most of the sales and the marketing comes in, so I'll have to break down and do something about that very soon. If you guys know anyone that's good with working with InDesign and PDFs and laying out this type of thing, let me know. Be willing to break them off with the share of the Patreon if we ever get to that point. I definitely need the assistance. I'm sure there's some really good people out there that know what they're doing, so... You're out there and you hear this, get a hold of me. I'm, I'm interested. So this is just getting the initial part of the water in here. And then if you want to, um, what you can do is rename this layer. So I'll just double click on it. I'm just going to call this river because that's basically what it is. That way we have an idea. And then you can lock it if you want, but I'm not quite done with this. So... I'm going to hold down the Alt key and come into these tighter areas where it's more rounded and kind of follow the contour a little bit more instead of the square area. And that gives you that illusion that it's, you know, it's coming around the sides and kind of skipping over that branch that's sticking out. I don't mind if we get the little foliage there, but, you know, there's nothing, nothing major, just... So we're just kind of coming into the little areas that we had to pass up because they're too tight and they're not perfectly square. So that's all we're doing. It's really basic. Same thing with this. I'm just going to come through here, make sure I got all this. And there is something I want to show you that you want to watch for. So on the very bottom here, I got too close to the edge, and you'll see these little ripples. You don't want that. So to fix that, what you do is you come back to the hide area and you're just going to hide the very edge of the map where the water is. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm just hiding that edge. So when you get close, you don't see that rippling. from the, It's tearing the, the image from the edge of the map to the outside of it. That's something you want to try to avoid. Uh, it did pretty good up here, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to go back to the reveal area and holding down. I'm going to hold down the Alt key to grab the the areas. So I want to kind of come around, get the edges and the things that are not perfectly square or rounded. I just kind of go through this and, and just kind of grab some more of it and. Make sure that I have some of the contour of the river. 
said, it doesn't need to be perfect. You're just kind of coming through here and very relaxing kind of almost like, you know, I'm in nature right now. I got this soundtrack of all these birds and a river running. So, all right, there we go. So that is just the preliminary layer. Now the secondary layer is a layer, a later, later layer is going to be around this white part where the river is dragging the uh, water through. So the, right now it's kind of wobbly, so I want to adjust that first. So I turn down the horizontal movement and the intensity just a little and the speed a little bit and the droplet size. It kind of gives you a better feel for the water. Now it looks more natural. It doesn't look like an earthquake's going on. Especially like when you come into areas like this, it looks pretty good. So that's that part. Now I'm going to add the kind of the rough edges around the, the rocks. So I want to temporarily turn off the layer for the river so I can see what I'm doing because it's distorting the actual uh, edge there. So I want to turn off. Okay, so I turned off the effect for right now. And I'm going to add another effect. So I want to go to the effects layer, which I'm on the effects channel, and I'm going to add the layer. And this is going to be the um, the rapids or the rough rapid, whatever you want to call them. So I want to go to ocean. And as you can see, you got this distortion going down. And that's kind of what I wanted, but I, I don't want that to be all over the map. So I'm going to go ahead and go with mask layer. And that gets rid of the, the mask temporarily. And then I'm going to, you can blur it too, so it kind of blends in with the background more. That's something you can do also. It's kind of handy. So it's not such a hard edge. And then I'm just going to take the, I'm going to take the alt key and come around the edges of this. So I just added the, the ocean effect. I turned off all the other layers so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of come around the edge, the, and this is the away edge, not, not so much on this side, but more on the, the downside or the downriver side. So it's like creating the illusion that there's a little bit of drag on the rocks here. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that with the Alt key. And as you can see, it kind of puts this distortion here, which is what I want. And then when I put the river on top of it, it's really going to look cool. Now, I can turn this down just a touch. And then the speed of it is going to come down just a hair because it's not, not running that fast. So that's kind of what I want to get rid of that illusion there. And here's the vertical size. Turn that down a little bit. So when I do add these to it it's not going to be so weird uh, let's see so i'm going to hold down the alt key and just kind of go through this Well, those frogs and such and all the nature is very inspirational. So there we go. Really not anything spectacular. You probably won't even see it once I put the, the river back on. So let's take a look. Yeah, you can barely tell. I mean, it's there. 
but it's so minute. And then the river, I'm going to blend that in just a little. Unlock it. Take the blend and just kind of blend it a little bit. So that, uh, that adds that illusion that there's movement behind the rocks. It kind of helps with the, uh, the water thing. So when you're playing, you're probably going to be zoomed up to about here. So they'll be able to see the reflection of this. So if you didn't want this web to be totally um, reflected, you can you can hide that. So you can come back and you can adjust a little, you know, if you don't want everything to look like it's distorted. So like here, you might want to you might want to take some areas and adjust them if needed. So you might come up through here and make it so that's not distorted. You know, just little things like that you can do if you if you feel inclined to do so. But I really like the effect that that put on there, that uh, drag effect on the water. That's really cool. All right, so this thing is sitting probably about at least 20 feet off the ground um, and then another five or ten feet below that for the river so it's pretty high up so if you fall down it's not going to be fun so that's basically all i need to do with the line of sight other than test it so i got the illusions of all that stuff in there i'm going to go to play mode this is how you test it and i need to check the ambient lighting first so i'm going to go to the lighting and this is kind of a shady area. It's not too bright, but I will go ahead and set it up for daytime. Or maybe dusk or dawn or one of those. So I think I'll do dusk. So um, what I'm going to do is click away from the any of these layers. I'm going to click on the ambient light and change the preset to dusk. And then I'm going to turn it on once I get back into the play mode. So that's the the gist of it. Now I want to look at the shadows, if there are any. Yeah, let's see if I turn this on or off. So the it's dusk right now, and if I have any shadows, they're going to show up in there. And I don't have a lot because I, I don't have the, you know, structures and stuff, so to speak. So let me go to this turn on the line of sight here and let's take a look at the shadows so I'm going to go to the back to the lighting tool back to this ambient lighting and take a look at where the shadow is landing so the length of the shadow is determined by this thing here so I'll leave that about there and then I'm going to swing the the direction of the shadow heading to the southwest or heading this west, whatever direction the artist had originally set. So that right about there. Then I'll decrease the shadow a little bit so it kind of matches what's already there. So I'm going to go out about five feet or so, seven feet. There we go. So that will cast a shadow, but it will match the shadowing that's already put on the map. So that's all I'm doing with that. And it's kind of a dusk thing, so it's not really dark, but it's kind of dim. So that's the ambient lighting. That's set now. So when I go into play mode, and then we have the, this is what the players will see, basically. So let me test with the party token. So I'm going to drag the party token onto the map. And that's pretty much what they're going to see, which is not the intent of the shadow there. So I might open this up. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, so when I open that up, that's a lot better. So the it's still going to be like a, a barrier for, for things, but it's not going to block all this light. It's just a layer to show where the top of the, the log is. So I don't want to leave it closed like that, because that's not really what they would see as far as I'm concerned. But they don't get to see the top of this, so interesting. But um, I'll have to play around with that. But basically, that's what will happen if you leave that on. But if you turn that off, then the players will be able to see the whole thing, which is kind of what I want. And then the token itself, you move it around. You can 
This this player doesn't have any vision light or any kind of torch or anything. So you can drag that on there and see if that improves the lighting. Hey, just notice it looks like a snake. I didn't even notice that. Kind of cool. It's a branch probably or a vine, but it looked like a snake. It's kind of cool. I might put a snake up there. <laughs> All right, so just take this and um, drag a option on here for the lighting. So if you go to the effects area, and we're going to drag and drop a torch onto the NPC. Okay, there we go. So that's... I see. It kind of made a little bit brighter halo over here. So if I go back to this uh, play mode... Let's put this back where it was. Unlock this. We're in play mode. Okay, everything's on. So that's basically what uh, the players would see. Now, if I turn on that shadowing here, let's see what happens. So, yeah, so you can see the radius of the, the light, kind of. But if I turn the, the ambient lighting to darkness, you'll be able to see it more. So if it's nighttime, we can go to moonlight. Oh, that looks really cool. Yeah, I like it. More than likely, they, they might end up coming through here at night. So I'm going to go back to play mode, which is the dice. And that, yeah, that's that's really nice. It, it kind of cancels out the, you know, the effect of the river, but I mean, that's pretty nice looking. I like it. All right, so that's pretty much all I have today. So I just tested out the lighting. The next map I'm going to work on next time is going to be very similar to that. So if I go to the images area... I'm going to, that was the top side map that we just worked on. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. So this is the internal part of the map. And what this is, is the actual hollow inside where all the spider folk hang out. So this has the actual spider's nest in here. And some chambers. And then there's an area crossing that the players have to go across here. And if they fall through, they go through into the river. So this is where the log has a big hole in the bottom. And it faces the water. So that's what you're seeing here. So we'll have to handle this a little different. I'm going to do the same thing except for I'm going to hide this inner part from the ambient light. Because I don't want the ambient light to shine into this log. The log itself is going to be dark and have its own line of sight type thing but uh, that's that's what i'll do next time or i might work on another piece so it's not repetitive so i might go with this uh the rangers camp this is another one that's both indoor and outdoor that'll show how to deal with the ambient light so it's not shining inside the building so we'll see but anyways um you have a good afternoon hopefully this helps you out a little bit and